Hello, welcome to the second part of the lesson on power in electrical circuits. In part one, we covered this formula, power is voltage times current. That tells us the power dissipated by a component is the voltage across it times the current through it. If we wanted the total amount of energy dissipated, we could use this formula, the power voltage times current times time. In part two, we're going to take a look at the formula on the bottom, how to work out power when we know resistance values. And there'll be some problems to try, so if you want to get pen, paper, calculator, you can pause the video and try the questions at the appropriate points. And here's a question to start with. Take a look at this part of a circuit. We've got a 5 ohm resistor with 2 amps going through it. Can I remind you that resistance is voltage divided by current, V over I, which rearranged would be V equals IR, or I equals V over R. Don't forget power is voltage times current, so the question is what power is dissipated, that means turn to heat, in, in the 5 ohm resistor when a current of 2 amps flows. If you want to pause the video, try this for yourself. And here's my answer. Well, the power formula we know is voltage times current, but we don't know the voltage. So we'll start off by working the voltage. V equals IR. The current is 2 amps. The resistance is 5 ohms. The power is therefore current times voltage. It's 2 amps times the voltage we've just worked out, 2 times 5. That comes to 20 watts. Notice what we ended up doing was multiplying the current by the current by the resistor. Current times current times resistance. Is there a general formula to work out power in this sort of problem? The answer is yes, of course there is. Let's derive it. Here's our resistor, R ohms, with the current I amps going through it. We know the power is I times V. But we know V is equal to IR. So we're going to substitute that into the equation. That gives us I times, and instead of V, we'll write IR. And that gives us power equals I squared R. Go back to the previous problem. That's exactly what we did. It was 2 squared, I was 2 amps, 2 squared times resistance, 5 ohms, I squared R. Very important formula, very easy to prove. Try another problem. In this problem, you're told the voltage and the resistance. And the question is, what power is dissipated in a 4 ohm resistor when a PD potential difference of 6 volts is applied? Pause the video, try this for yourself. Here's my answer. Well, we'll start by calculating the current. I is V over R. So the current will be 6 volts divided by 4 ohms, V over R. The power is voltage times current. It's the 6 volts times 6 over 4. And that comes to 36 over 4, 9 watts. Notice what we've ended up doing. Voltage, 6 volts, times voltage, divided by the resistance. And the question is, is there a general formula? And you guessed it, there is. Let's prove it briefly. Power is voltage times current. We know that I is V over R. So we're going to use that. Voltage times, not I, but V over R. That gives us V squared over R as our formula. The power, if we know the voltage and resistance, is given by V squared over R. Go back to the previous problem. That's exactly what we did. 6 times 6 is V squared, divided by 4 ohms. So, we've got some formula for working out power. P is V times I. P is I squared R. P is V squared over R. Now, some students get a bit confused. They ask this. They say, look at that middle formula. If R gets bigger, the power gets bigger. But look at the bottom formula. The bottom formula, where we divide by R, would say if R gets bigger, 
power gets smaller. What is going on? And I, I say to them, P is not going to increase generally when R increases. P is not proportional to R. If you double R, you don't double P unless the current is fixed. So when you change R, you might be changing the current. We'll do an example in a moment to show this. The same applies to this formula. If you change R, you can't assume that V squared is fixed. P is not inversely proportional to R unless V is fixed. Now, if that doesn't make much sense, I hope this example will help you. Let's look at these two circuits. In the top circuit, we've got a 5 ohm resistor. In the bottom circuit, we've got a 10 ohm resistor. And we've both got 20 volts supplying the resistor. We've doubled the resistance. The top resistance is only 5 ohms, and the bottom one is 10 ohms. So we're going to see what the effect of doubling the resistance is. Resistance has doubled. Here's one for you to try. Can you find the current and the power for each of those two circuits? What's the current in the top circuit? What's the power? What's the current in the bottom circuit? What's the power? Pause, and I'll give you my answer in a moment. Well, here's my answer. First, let's work out the current. I is V over R. It's 20 volts over 5 ohms, which is 4 amps. That would give a power of I squared R, 4 squared times 5. 16 times 5 is 80 watts. So in the top circuit, that 5 ohm resistor gives 80 watts power dissipation. Do the same thing for the bottom circuit. I is V over R, this time it's 20 volts over 10 ohms. That's a current of only 2 amps. I hope you see the current has gone down. It's halved, in fact. Now work out the power using I squared R. The current is only 2 amps, so it's 2 squared times 10, which is 40 watts. So even though we double the resistor, resistance, and the formula is I squared R, we've got to remember that I squared might be changing. In fact, I squared did change. It was 4 squared. It was 16 in the first problem, and it had dropped to 2 squared. Only 4 in the second problem. So be very careful if you try to deduce things from formula. can't assume I squared is constant if you think about the effect of changing the resistance. Look through this example, and you'll see doubling the resistance has actually halved the current. I squared has actually gone down four times. I squared has gone down four times. If you worked out the power using V squared over R, you'd get the same answers, 80 watts and 40 watts. If you want to try that for yourself, you can. Time to do some problems. Here's a typical problem. A 3 kilowatt kettle, that's its power dissipation, 3 kilowatt kettle is designed to operate at 230 volts, typical in the UK. Can you find the resistance of the heating element? And once you've done that, what do you think the power output would be if the kettle is operated at 115 volts instead of 230 volts? And to do that, you can assume the resistance stays the same. Sometimes resistance changes, like a light bulb gets higher if the material gets hotter. In this case, we're going to assume the resistance is a fixed value. That means the, the thing obeys Ohm's law. So pause the video, carefully read that, have a go for yourself. And here are my answers. First of all, let's find the resistance of the heating element. We know power is V squared over R, so I'm going to rearrange that. That gives R is V squared divided by the power, V squared over P. A little bit of algebra to rearrange that equation. So if I know V and P, I can find the resistance. Let's do it. R is V squared, 230 squared, divided by 3 kilowatts is 3,000 watts. So P is 3,000 watts. 230 squared over 3,000 is 17.63 recurring. I'm just going to give it to a couple of decimal places. And because we're asked for the resistance as a final value, it would be sensible to give the answer as two significant figures, 18 ohms, the resistance. 
Now the question is, what is the power output if the kettle is operated at 115 volts? And I hope you see that 115 is half of 230. So it's only being operated at half the voltage. Maybe it's being used in some parts of Europe or the States where the voltage is 115 volts. The power output, we can work out if we want to using a formula, V squared over R. It's 115 squared over, I'm going to use the accurate resistance value to avoid rounding errors, 17.63. It comes to 750 watts. It's gone down a lot from 3000 watts to 750. Could have done that in my head. I know that the power depends on V squared. If the resistance is constant, what happens to V squared? If I halve the voltage, V squared will go down four times. That means the power will go down four times. It's a quarter of 3,000. It's 750 watts. Think about that. You can do it quickly by proportionality, or you can put the numbers in the equation like this. But it makes a big difference. Halving the voltage hasn't halved the power. It's reduced the power four times. Here's another problem for you. 20 milliamps is passing through a 5.0 kilo ohm resistor. What's the power dissipated in the resistor? And what is the power if the current is doubled? Pause the video, try it. And here are my answers. First of all, the first part is straightforward. We use the power equals I squared R formula. The only bit to watch is get, getting the units right. The current, I, is 20 milliamps. Well, milli is a thousandth, 10 to the minus 3. So I do 20 times 10 to the minus 3 amps, all squared. And 5 kilo ohms is 5,000 ohms. If I do that, do it in your head or on a calculator, it does come to 2 watts. Perhaps 2.0 watts would be acceptable. 2 watts is acceptable. 2 watts. The second part is the effect of doubling the current. Well, you could repeat the calculation using 40 times 10 to the minus 3, but there's a quicker way. Since power equals I squared R, and we're assuming R is a fixed value, 5 kilo ohms, doubling I will make I squared 4 times bigger. If you double the number, its squared value gets 4 times bigger. For example, 5 squared is 25. If you double 5, it's 10. 10 squared is 100, 4 times bigger than 25. Doubling I will make I squared 4 times bigger, and the power will therefore be 4 times bigger. It will be 2 watts times 4. 8 watts. And basically that's, that's it. You know the key formula, VI, VIT for the energy, I squared R, V squared over R for power. All you've got to do is apply them correctly in problems and think carefully so you don't do anything silly. Good luck.